it can only take one afternoon to change life as you once knew it. So sad. Sunday afternoon, a hungry attic fire did just that for 20 families who live at this Federal Way apartment village. Oh my goodness. Well, I guess it's caving down now. There's definitely a lot of damage. Cece Olson was at church when the fire started right above her apartment. Ugh. I don't know. It's like being in shock. What are you going to do? What about your home? What about your life? But when your life comes crashing down, you don't have to look very far to find someone to lean on. I don't know how I can ever thank you. For Cece, that's someone. And I was going to do whatever I could to help. Was two people, neighbors Bo and Samantha, who took action as soon as they saw smoke come from her apartment, saving something irreplaceable. Giving her comfort among the chaos. Oh, this is Coca-Lina. She's just the best baby in the world. Way I jumped over railing there, went in, was able to secure her two dogs. You know, you're an angel. I mean, for someone to think of you and come running across in bare feet to rescue your animals is huge. The husband and wife team won't ever call themselves the H word. Do you and your wife feel like heroes to see? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I'm just, I'm sure she would have done the same for us. Just good neighbors. Because when someone's world suddenly changes for the worst. I mean, I don't know if they'll ever be livable, if they're going to let us live in another place, if we're going to have a fine another. I have no idea what's going to happen. That's when the best of us is needed the most. But even if I don't stay here, we're still going to be friends. Oh, I've been homeless for four, three months. Numbers brought Eve Renshaw here. I went to Social Security. They're giving me $240 for my husband's death. $240 is what he was worth to them. You know, I mean, I made a sign that literally says widow, husband passed away and need help, please, homeless. I never thought I would be in this situation ever in my life. <laughs> I don't even want to wake up in the morning at the time. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of everything. Look at them. They walk right past me like I'm a piece of garbage. Like I'm lying, you know? The truth, near the corner of Fourth and Pine, is that Eve is one of many people who need help tonight. The vast majority of us in the community are really just a life event away from needing some type of behavioral health services. King County's Homeless Coordinating Agency says homeless figures are at an all-time high. People living in cars and RVs skyrocketing too. For right now, it would just be nice to have a home. You know, I had my own home and now I have nothing, literally nothing. Eve says she does have two children and her own ideas. These people out here would stop building all these huge buildings and actually put money into like low income housing or, or shelters for people. Then our, we would be okay. People that would need homes would be okay. She also wants to let you know she's more than just a statistic. And I'm a person, I'm somebody, I am something. I'm sorry. Seattle is not a wasteland. Oh, it's a great little neighborhood. Yet a crime spree here. So it's that big of a problem. It's got the neighbors pretty upset. Has left a trail of evidence. This is the work of a man with a modus operandi. <laughs> neighbors like Bob Snyder say. It's it's human or, or a really big dog. <laughs> It doesn't pass the smell test. Somebody felt it was important enough that they wanted to put up signage. He's part of a new kind of neighborhood watch. It's a serial pooper. Looking for a pair of suspected squatters. There is hazards that go along with having people do that sort of thing in your yard. You got to watch your step. You got to watch your step. This manure mystery hasn't prompted a sniff from police. We went there to get to the bottom of it or them or something like that. How serious does the Seattle Police Department take this kind of crime? Well, I think it's a pretty serious thing for all of us when there's poop. Sergeant Sean Whitcomb says a fecal fine could top $1,000. The perpetrator or poopetrator, as the case may be, uh, would need to 
have been caught in the act. But even Whitcomb acknowledges it is not the department's top priority or even number two. Violent crime, property crime, these are the things that keep us busy. We're not going to be uh, staking out a certain street waiting for the phantom pooper to come by and leave their mess. Until then, Matthias Caldwell may have trouble sleeping. Maybe not. I know it's, it's pretty terrifying thinking about serial poop. No, I'm going to be fine. I mean, there's poop on the ground all the time. He'll definitely keep his eyes open, his nose pinched, and we'll keep our tongues firmly in cheek. I know I'd be pretty upset if I came out in the morning and, and uh, found a big pile in my front yard, though. In Seattle, Chris Daniels, King Five News. We are in front of my current home, 1921 Craftsman, old world charm aplenty. Stained glass windows inside my father made. It's a beautiful house. It's, it's the American dream. It's what everyone wants right now and can't get in Seattle. And I've got it, barely. I am Amy Marie Douglas, and I am an artist. So this is the Letterpress Studio at the School of Visual Concepts, downtown Seattle. I get to play with letters. I get to play with ink. I get to get my hands dirty. I get to feel the things that I create. Technology that's 100 years old is clinging to life here in Amazonia, two blocks away from the spheres. The things in this room, because of the equipment and the age and the wear and the tear, it is very much like this city, what the city is going through. It's the same type of thing. There's character here. There is character in Seattle, the Seattle that I grew up in, the little craftsmen, the Cape Cods, those things. We're losing that. We're, we're getting all of the gray boxes. They look exactly the same. Do you think the character of the city, sort of at its core, has changed? I do, definitely. It has. I, I think most Seattleites and natives that you would talk to would agree. That's not to place blame on new people coming here that just haven't adjusted to what Seattle is. I just think that there's a lot of pressure that comes with living here. We are all so stressed at how this has changed so rapidly. because I'm a contractor. I don't have benefits, you know, I don't have health care. Um, and honestly, I, I make a good living doing what I do, but I don't make enough to pay for my own health care and pay this mortgage and pay the gas, the electricity, a car payment. So a renter would look at you and say, she's so lucky, she owns her house. It's not that simple, right? It's not that simple. I know you thought about selling it, but where would that put you? Well, if I sold it, I feel like if once I sell it, I can never look back. I can never come back to Seattle. I don't think I would be able to afford to. You couldn't get back into the market here? I don't think I could. 
and you couldn't afford rent. Oh, God, no. How much of your identity do you think is, is wrapped up in being a Seattleite? I'm very proud of being a Seattleite, but I, I just feel like it's so different. I feel like I'm an imposter, and I know I'm not. I want to remember the place that I knew and loved as it was. This is Spud Fish and Chips at Green Lake in Seattle. Everything about this place is unique. It's been here since 1940. It's funky, it's, it's tiny. It was just a great family place. And we're gonna lose this icon, this architecture for another large box with efficiency units. This used to be the food giant. Today it is the Wallingford QFC. Uh, it's really no different than any other fancy grocery store. It was just kind of a neighborhood place and you could focus on just doing small town things uh, when it used to be a small town here in Seattle. So this is, this is what it is now. There are magical moments in some of those places that no longer exist. My memories are going to be totally different than someone else's, but when, when that art can bring two different people together and tell two different stories, you're forming a relationship with someone that you never would have met otherwise. How does your story end? Hmm. Good one. I think if I'm going to be realistic about it, I think it ends with me going elsewhere. Got to make a move to a town that's right for me. I can't afford to stay. Um, I would compromise too many things that are important to me. To fight, to fight the good fight and struggle to afford this. How do you know if that person is the one for you? How did she know? How did he know? Maybe it's this. Maybe it's this simple. You just do. Maybe we should start this love story with Kenny's tattoo, Do Life. It says it right there. It's two simple words. Do Life. His philosophy of life. You know, you gotta show up when life shows up. His mantra. I mean, Here we go. their mantra now. Doing life with you. Indeed. She's helped me, she's shown me how. It, it makes us feel connected. It's something that we can both do. And it's something we can share together. It's kind of fun. Yeah, dragging me out and stretching my comfort zones. Let's rewind this love story. Rewind three years before Claire met Kenny, before they started saying these things. Kenny, you are my best friend and feeling these things. Yeah, she's that emotional rock. You have brought so much joy and love and have just filled my life with purpose. Absolutely, I love her, yeah. I'm so happy that I found you. Yeah, it was February 11th, 2004. And I hit a jump going too fast. Overshot the landing of a tabletop to jump in the terrain park. Fell about 40 feet onto my head, broke my neck, my back, and my, and my femur all at once. And um, yeah, ended up a C3-4 quad, so all I can do is shrug. I drive my chair with my head when I touch the, the sensors. And, yeah, yep, 
I don't even think about the fact that he's in a chair. Yeah, it doesn't really phase her, never has. So she's always said, you know, if, had I not been injured, she never would have met me. That day, they met. One of those, you know, love at first thought kind of thing. Love at first thought. Love at first sight, if you believe in these things. Claire believes. When I walked through the doors for the interview. By interview, she means the interview for the job as Kenny's caregiver. I swear to this day that I left and said, I think I'm going to fall for my boss. I called my sister um, just because of his blue eyes um, and his infectious personality. Claire got the job, then she lost the job, fired. Not because of anything she did, no. It's because of what she said. Go ahead, say what you said. Oh, I said I have a secret. If you weren't my boss, I'd kind of want to date you. I was so nervous, and I ran, I was running back into the bathroom and just so, so Hair nervous. on the back of my neck standing up. Yeah. Like, ah. And then I get yeah. a message the next day. You're fired? Yeah. Question mark. A decision he had to make for love. Fast forward now. Claire moves on to another job. They begin dating, doing life, and loving life. And now, here's the best part. Yeah, I said, will you marry me? You said. I think I said absolutely. The wedding is in three months. It's been said and it's worth repeating. Love is the answer. That's his other tattoo. Right on my arm. Love the answer. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, to just about any question. So that's their story. Yeah, I think we're living a love story. It's a unique story. People don't see this kind of thing all the time. But uh, yeah, I think yeah, I think it's a powerful one. John Sharifi. One of the, the best decisions I've made is asking her those four words. King Five News. Continue to do life and tackle the, the next thing that comes our way. What is it about a building that can trigger flashbacks? I was down there watching LeBron play my Sonics. Recollections, memories. Some of the best memories of my life. The kind people like to relive. Key Arena did that Friday night. Key Arena for the very last time. No, it makes you feel good, and yet it makes you feel sad. This is a place with bones from the 1960s that got a facelift in the 90s and gave birth to a legend in 2008. Just finally being a professional, you know, having my own car, my own house, just having a little bit of responsibility for the first time I can remember where it kind of all started. Kevin Durant came home. He's got his green shoes ready and uh, it's gonna be really fun to, to be a part of it. He's the baddest, I can't say it on TV, but he's the baddest in your mouth I ever seen in my life. <laughs> Durant is the last of the Sonics where he played his rookie year it was a simpler time then. I'm eight years old. Cordell Jones wasn't alive. Do you remember the Sonics at all? Have you heard anything about the Sonics? No, because I wasn't born yet. There was a Sonic boom before Seattle did something similar. Just ask Slick Watts. Last dance is kind of kind of touchy. You get a little, emo little, little, little emotional. The original green and gold icon who never left the city. She had a tear, really. To know that it's gonna be over. The stars. Yeah, for sure. It'll be fun. The fans. Hey, Katie. Woo! All wanted one last chance to cheer the past in the present. You know what he's gonna do tonight? Just I, so you know. What? Just to give you a little heads up. This is not for the camera, though. So, <laughs> camera, you gotta. This is a secret. Up. He said Kevin's gonna do something. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited! A collective consciousness that ignited a roar 10 years in the making. NBA is back in the Seattle for tonight, but hopefully it's back forever soon. No shortage of nostalgia. Smiles dominated, and so did the Warriors in an otherwise meaningless exhibition affair. I want my Sonics back. That anger. Dear NBA. That still resonates here. Bring back our Sonics and KD. Muted, at least for one night a civic celebration of what was I miss the Sonic so badly. and what could be with a changing footprint at Seattle Center. Perhaps a permanent return will come 
when a new arena arises in a couple years. They need to bring one back, man. We're going to keep saying it until it happens. It will replace the one that is now, like everything else, a memory. You know, it was, it was breathtaking. At Key Arena, Chris Daniels, King 5 News.